Harriet Hoffmann. I'm currently president of the European Photovoltaic Industry Association, which I, by the way, joined almost from its very beginning, more than 25 years ago. I started more than 30 years ago. That was uh, in Germany, in building up a production company for wafer cells and modules. It was a joint venture between RWE, the German utility, and DASA. In the late 90s, my company was among the five biggest production companies worldwide. Today, I'm representing the company SMA, the inverter company, the world leader, producing inverters and uh, system services. Since many, many years, I was always looking very much to bring together the science from the institutes and transfer to industry in order to get products developed uh, to be sold on the market. So you have been one of the pioneers in that field. Well, that's my brief history, being quite active uh, in that field for a while. It started with the space business, because uh, a cable to the satellite mm, just doesn't work. And the batteries which were used those days uh, radioactive batteries, uh, they are way too expensive. Even 40 years ago, it was cheaper to power a satellite by solar cells. So that is where it all started. And then we had uh, first consumer products. You may remember in the early days, it was the little calculators, where it proved to be that a small solar cell on a calculator is less expensive than the battery which uh, you had to uh, do to your uh, system. But, of course, although the number of those systems were multi-millions, hundreds of millions, there was no gigawatt. There was, in the first days per year, a few megawatts. But we have been able, in the early 90s, to set up the first feed-in tariff, which was then amended in 2000 to be the famous EEG by Hans Josef Hell, Hermann Scheer. As you know, that was really then the start of the big market development. That was taken over also then by Japan. And then with the EEG, we really went to the number one installation countries where we are still today. But of course, that can't go forever. Just over the last 11 years, from 2000 to 2011, our global market grew by 57% per year. Quite clear, you see then many companies want to participate in such a booming market in the industry. And therefore, there was a lot of analysis from different countries, from Japan, from Europe later, United States, from China, how to participate in this nicely growing market. And then once you made the decision to play an uh, important role and you would also like to build up production capacity. And that was done heavily over the last couple of years for the benefit also of equipment manufacturers and uh, material suppliers and everything. But uh, some people mixed a little bit that 57% growth per year installed equipment even at a higher rate but it, I think it was quite clear that it can't go on forever, that 57% growth per year is not sustainable. And that ended exactly where we are today, namely in quite some heavy overcapacity. Now, overcapacity in an industry, and we saw that 20 years ago, 10 years ago, in the semiconductor business and many other businesses, well, you do have then lowest prices because you still want to sell your products in an overcapacity market. And uh, right as we speak, I think we have all the production companies severe problems. Most production companies are having losses today. Now, are those prices which you see in the market, uh, are they then not working for the future? Well, I'm uh, great supporter of price experience curves. So you would just ask yourself the price level for modules. When would you expect it at accumulated volume? Well, we will have those prices, healthy prices, where everyone makes its margin at around 200 gigawatt globally cumulative installed. Today we are for silicon at around 60 
we now have to have the shakeout, we have to wait until the next wave of production machines is installed with even lower cost. The interesting point is that with the prices of the components we have today, we have seen a drop in the levelized cost of electricity, which had opened a tremendous opportunities of new markets worldwide. So nowadays, you not only have the supported markets like in Europe with the feed-in tariff, you also have now the markets without the big supports like a fuel saver. There are many diesel generators around in India, Australia, in many places in South America. But the kilowatt hour produced from such a diesel generator is way higher than what you can do today with a solar system. So all you can do now is, with all the existing gigawatts of diesel systems, you just put on site a solar generator. Whenever the sun is shining, you produce cheaper the kilowatt hours with that. And whenever you need at night or whenever electricity, you use still your existing diesel generator. That is the first step. It goes on. And just to speak then for the coming development, well, I said before, not 57% per year. That is not sustainable. But you don't need that. If you just assume an average growth for the running decade in the range of 20 to 25 percent, and then you drop the average growth every decade by 5 percent, you end up in 2050 with a number producing globally 30,000 terawatt hours of electricity. 30,000 terawatt hours. That is the equivalent of 50% more electricity than what the globe has today in electricity. With everything, nuclear, fossil, gas, everything. And of course, it will be not only photovoltaics. There will also be the wind, onshore, offshore. There will be uh, solar thermal for heating, cooling. That together, much sooner, than many people would expect, especially the traditional energy sector. Much sooner, we will be at a stage where the global energy can be powered economically by renewables, where solar will play an important role. So that is, in a nutshell, the past and also how I see the future. And I think uh, we have a bright future ahead of us. The general outlook is bright, prospect, I think, is very great. Thank you very much for this information, sir. Thank you.